Today I'd like to discuss the myth around metabolic syndrome. They call it syndrome X. And that's a combination of several conditions. Central abdominal fat, blood pressure, glucose levels are starting to go up. We have high triglycerides with insulin resistance for sure. And also we have uh, higher levels of insulin in the blood. It's called hyperinsulinemia, an association with an increased amount of uric acid. We automatically associate metabolic syndrome with something really, really bad. It's a disease that you get and doctors are going to put you on a lot of medications. There's going to be a lot of testing and it's very complex and no one really knows what causes it. But today I'm going to give you an, a completely new viewpoint on metabolic syndrome as it relates to a type of sugar called fructose. Now, what I believe metabolic syndrome really is, it's a protective mechanism. Now, if we look at our history as a hunter-gatherer down the evolutionary trail, humans did eat fruit and they did eat honey, not very often, which has a really good amount of fructose, okay? So I want to just talk about fructose for a second. It's a unique type of sugar. And when you consume glucose, there's receptors all over your body that can metabolize glucose. But fructose is different. The liver is really the only place where your body can metabolize fructose. And there's some very unique uh, things about fructose that relate to this topic that I'm going to talk about. Number one, it's a lot more lipogenic, which means that it produces more fat than other types of sugar. Also, fructose enhances the fat genes much more than glucose and other sugars. If you just think about fructose for a minute and what would be the survival benefit of consuming some fructose, you know, infrequently in the past, as we're trying to survive in our environment, food did not come very easily. And anytime that you had some fruit or honey, uh, it was a survival thing. And so this really aligns with what fructose does in the body. Number one, it retains sodium. Now, what would be the survival mechanism for that? Well, way back in time, we did not have a lot of salt available in our diets. We had animal meat, there were some plants, we pretty much ate anything we could. And apparently, if we look at some interesting differences between way back then and now, we ate a lot less salt back then or sodium because it just wasn't available. And so sodium does help retain fluid and water and prevents dehydration. And so one thing that fructose does is it helps you retain sodium and sodium chloride salt, which connects to sodium. So way back then when we had fruit and honey, we could retain more fluid and prevent dehydration. In fact, uh, fructose stimulates this hormone called um, vasopressin, which is called the antidiuretic hormone. So it prevents the loss of fluid from the body. It helps you retain fluid. So this is a survival mechanism. Now, if we take a look at what else we did way back then compared to now, we consumed a lot more potassium from just vegetation, plants, things like that. Compared to now, <laughs> the average person consumes about one and a half cups of vegetables. So that doesn't give us much potassium. So nowadays we have a lot of sodium and very low amounts of potassium. Very different from in the past. Another interesting thing about fructose is it causes sodium sensitivity. What's the advantage of that survival-wise? Well, if you can make sodium more sensitive, you can absorb it more, it goes in your body, it can be retained more. And another benefit of holding this sodium is to help you increase blood pressure. Because one of the really important things in the past was you don't wanna end up with low blood pressure because you don't have enough sodium because we need to maintain the same amount of pressure to push the nutrients and the oxygen throughout our body, including our brain. Next thing is abdominal obesity. What would be the survival mechanism of that? Well, we're storing fuel for another day. That's what fat is. It's a survival mechanism. And we have a lot of extra space in our bellies, right? It's almost an unlimited amount of space. Well, it's not completely unlimited, but you can store a tremendous amount of stored energy in your midsection. So that would be a survival mechanism uh, during lean times. Now, of course, nowadays, we consume a bit more fructose than we did in the past, right? I mean, fruits are available 24-7 every day of the year. Honey is also available. And also other types of fructose in the form of high fructose corn syrup. We're actually drinking our fructose now. I mean, even table sugar is like 50% fructose. So fructose is pretty much everywhere. 
Now, what about this other thing with insulin resistance? Is there any survival mechanism with that? There sure is. Number one, insulin resistance helps protect against the toxicity of glucose because it makes receptors for insulin very resistant so you can't absorb as much glucose into the cell because if there's too much glucose, that's going to be toxic and it's a way to protect you against both glucose and insulin. And along with insulin resistance, there's another thing that happens that helps you survive, and that's called gluconeogenesis. That's the production of new sugar that doesn't involve a carbohydrate. So when people are a pre-diabetic and they have insulin resistance, uh, they actually make more glucose, okay? But it's not coming from the diet. It's just their, their liver is just making more glucose from other sources. And this is behind the dawn phenomena. This is where you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you have high blood glucose, but maybe you didn't have any glucose the night before. It just means that you have insulin resistance and the liver makes more glucose because of it. And this is what you see in diabetes as well. You have a diabetic with high blood glucose. A certain portion of that is not coming from the sugar they're eating. It's coming from the liver producing a lot of sugar. What is the survival mechanism of gluconeogenesis? Well, number one, it helps you protect uh, against hypoglycemia because your brain depends partially on glucose, which can be made by your body. And in times when there's not a lot of glucose available, this extra added gluconeogenesis can help the brain during survival modes. But of course, nowadays it's gotten out of control, right? Because we're having way too much sugar and we have way too much gluconeogenesis. Now, the next point I want to bring up is uric acid. You probably already know that when you consume fructose, you spike your uric acid. Now, what is the connection survival-wise with uric acid? Well, number one, it's a potent antioxidant, okay? So from that viewpoint, it protects you against oxidation. Oxidation of what? Well, fructose, which is a type of sugar that kind of oxidizes the inside of the arteries and it creates a lot of damage unless there's some protective factors that are connected to it, one being uric acid. But uric acid is a good predictor of high blood pressure and heart disease. So uric acid tends to increase blood pressure. What's the survival mechanism of that? Well, like I said before, when you don't have enough sodium, okay, we're gonna end up with low blood pressure and that is not a good survival mix. So the uric acid comes in there to help increase the blood pressure under conditions of low sodium, okay? So in the past, uh, uric acid was one way to raise the blood pressure. Of course, nowadays, when you have a lot of fructose and a lot of salt, that creates a huge problem with uric acid, very pathogenic. Uric acid also directly makes salt more sensitive. Nowadays, when someone's salt sensitive, um, we tell people to restrict their salt. But what they really should do is restrict their fructose and increase that other mineral that I mentioned called potassium. Potassium is something that our body has evolved with way back in the past. We used to eat a lot more of it than we do now. And so as long as you have higher amounts of potassium, you can handle a lot more sodium. And it just happens that more potassium lowers blood pressure very, very nicely. So when we talk about blood pressure, you know, we're not necessarily avoiding fructose. What do we do? We avoid salt diets, right? So very simply, just understanding these mechanisms, you can very easily control your blood pressure by increasing potassium, getting rid of the sugars, especially fructose. And as far as sodium goes, as long as you have enough potassium, you have like a two to one ratio twice as much potassium as sodium, you're going to be totally fine. Another thing about uh, uric acid, it's involved with the immune inflammation reaction as it can help fight off infections, things like that. In the past, we use that as a survival mechanism. Nowadays, if we have too much uric acid, we get inflammation throughout our bodies, especially in the big toe, and that's called gout. Now, another really interesting survival thing is just the storage of fat and the storage of glucose as glycogen, right? Glycogen is, is stored glucose. What's interesting about this as it relates to water, in times of survival, when we didn't have enough water, believe it or not, as we burned our fat, 
glycogen can make water. In fact, just a little over one gram, like 1.1 gram of fat, when it's burned, produces one gram of water, which is interesting. So that's going to be a survival uh, mechanism to help against um, dehydration, but also glycogen. So if you envision these string of glucose molecules connected together, um, they're connected together with a lot of water. So for every one gram of glucose that you burn, you release 3.5 grams of water. So you're releasing a lot of available water when you burn up this glucose as glycogen. Now, in the past, when we consumed fructose, um, it always came with a bunch of antioxidants because we ate fruit. And of course, the fruit wasn't as sweet as it is now, but fruit generally has antioxidants. And antioxidants protect against the oxidative damage of the fructose. It gets rid of the complications of just high sugar. And this is why a diabetic will have much less problems if they actually also have the antioxidants connected with that sugar versus the refined sugars where you're just doing high fructose corn syrup and you're drinking it. Related to antioxidants, I'm going to just touch on vitamin C, which is interesting. Vitamin C has a very similar chemistry to both glucose and fructose. And so the more glucose and fructose you consume, the more vitamin C is required. One is it helps protect the immune system. Another is it helps to uh, get rid of oxidative damage from the high glucose. Vitamin C can even inhibit the burning of fat as well. So it can actually help you survive because it slows down to a certain degree the fat oxidation or fat burning. Now, what I'm not saying is avoiding vitamin C because it's going to help you lose weight. That's not how it works. The point I'm making is the vitamin C in the fruit is protective against that fructose. So when you study metabolic syndrome and you look at what they say is the cause, they said overeating, it could be obesity, stress, a lack of exercise, age. And when you really understand this, you're going to be less susceptible to just going, oh, let's just treat each part of this with a different drug, which makes no sense whatsoever. So if you have problems with sodium, if you have problems with the, your midsection, if you have problems with high blood pressure, if you have problems with uric acid, fructose is what you need to avoid and in all forms as well. Now, if you want a complete diet to know exactly what to eat, to reverse a lot of the problems that you might have, I put that video up right here. Check it out.